Roger Mullen. Madam yeah. De Deputy Speaker, many congratulations from the Scottish benches at your election. In February 1974, I first stood for this Parliament. It's been a rather long campaign, <laughs> <laughs> but here I am, representing that wonderful constituency of Kirkcaldy and Cowden Beath. At the 2010 election, former Prime Minister Gordon Brown had a majority of 23,000. I stand here today with a majority of some 10,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An indication, surely, of a desire for change, not just in my constituency, but this has been mirrored the length and breadth of Scotland about the need for change. Here, here, here. It's fitting on these occasions, of course, to recognise the work of the previous Member of Parliament. Gordon Brown was a giant in Labour Party politics and in British politics. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He went on to become Chancellor of the Exchequer and of Prime Minister, a very distinguished career which I pay tribute to. Yeah. There are many issues where we disagreed, but I'm sure the whole House will follow me in wishing him the very best for his future and particularly look forward to the work he intends doing internationally amongst the poorest countries in the world to bring education to the most disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. Kirkcaldy and Cowden Beath is a constituency of many parts. Some of our communities, including Cowden Beath, Loch Gelly, Kelty, Loch Orr, Balingri, Cross Hill and the delightful Long Finnans, were hewn out of the very mines of the Scottish coal fields. That mining industry may have gone, but the strength of the community built by those miners is still there, although for the last 30 years or more they have been suffering from political and economic neglect, such that I will have to begin to do my very best to address. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In other parts of the constituency, from Dysart, you can meander down the coast through Kirkcaldy, Kinghorn, Aberdour and to the more modern Dalgetty Bay and gaze across the River Forth to Edinburgh. This is the coastal stretch that was a favourite of Adam Smith, that much misquoted father of economics. He would often walk this way and contemplate the great philosophical questions of the day. And as he did so, he would look at the impressive European trading ships that would sail up and down the Forth, providing that strong economic and social link to the many great nations of the continent. Standing on the shores of Scotland, he saw the importance of international trade and of a European outlook. His perspective then in the 18th century challenges us all today to be just as outward looking and imaginative as he was in his time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knew too there was no centre of internationalism. It is something to be sought in the minds and the deeds of people. Whether you live in a great city or a great land or in a small seaside town on the northern shores of Scotland, you can be international. Yeah, yeah. He knew too of problems. And as I look across at these benches, I see many problems. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, I, if, I just, if I just point out one thing where I would share the view with Adam Smith, he could see very, reg very readily that when you looked on people with power and with riches, it was no protection against small-mindedness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning to other matters, I was very impressed by the very recent OECD report outlining the fact that excessive inequality is bad for growth. To talk of inequality is not to engage in the politics of envy. Rather, it is to engage in a debate about economic failure and missed opportunities. Yeah, yeah. To finish with a quote from Adam Smith, no society can surely be flourishing and happy of which the greater part of the members are poor and miserable. Yeah, yeah, 
Kevin Hollenrake. Madam Deputy Speaker, congratulations on your election. Uh, my honourable friend, I speak to, what, as, speak to you as one of the problems from the other side of the House. <laughs> congratulations on a fine opening speech. I stand before you today not as someone who has long pursued a career in politics, but as someone who was inspired many years ago to make the most of my life. <laughs> 